So now I went into expenses. I, I skipped over payments because we're not going to set up merchant processing, but expenses show items table on expense and purchase forms. So this is extremely important if you're going to really start doing like billable items. If you are, if you're doing purchase orders, if you have to order things in to turn around and sell back out, especially on projects, you need, you want to have that all turned on. Um, if you're going to be tracking the expenses and items per customer, again, billable expenses, that's what all of this is talking about. Mm -hmm. um, make expenses and items billable, and then you can do markup. It's kind of neat that you can do a default markup rate, so you don't have to type it in every time. Um, but there are ways you can actually set it up. You can still override the default by pushing in uh, specifically what you would want. So here, I'm a firm believer you should always do 100% markup. Minimum, people may disagree with this. I found the absolute bare minimum. You want to be looking at 35% gross, gross margin to minimum maybe break even. So you really should be above that. Always just plan it that way. You can always bring it down. Track billable expenses and items as income. Yeah, so whether you want to have the markup all combined into one piece or not. Or maybe more than one income account, yeah. Exactly. And charge sales tax. This is a very, 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 add a lot more varies on their powerful checkbox. Um, it has the power to really upset you or not. Um, depending on whether your books are set up in a cruel basis or cash basis, you're going to get a whole different world out of this. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong on this, Linda. If you start it in cash basis. So I'm going to purposely, I'm not going to check that yet. Um, I'm going to just do my default terms here because this is a super important point. Super important. When I chose my method of accounting, accrual mm -hmm. versus cash, when I choose accrual and then I go check that box, it will start with the new sales tax module that Intuit has implemented into the program. If you start it as cash basis and check that off, you will get the very manual aspect of sales tax older model that you can upgrade to the new one. Everybody right? seems to like a lot more. Um, and there's less challenges with it. Um, it's going to get better. It, it's still it's, kind it's, of a work in process. I would strongly recommend because you can go from one up, you can, you can start at cash and then you can turn it on, but you can't go the other way around. Yeah. Make sure that when you check this box off, it should be in cash basis. I hope we did a good enough job stressing that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it worked. I'm afraid. Purchase orders. So purchase orders, turning them on and off here. If you're going to use... Uh, estimates, you know, if you're using QuickBooks Online Advanced, you're most likely already going to be using projects, um, uh, what am I, progress invoicing as well. Mm -hmm. Your whole thing starts, of course, with an estimate. Estimate gets set up, sent out, customer approves the estimate, and from the estimate, you have the items that you specifically have to order for them. You can turn that estimate into a purchase order off of the purchase descriptions of that. We'll put some links or some more video for that but you can also take that same estimate and then create an invoice. So that's where some of this stuff comes from to take care of the full accounting cycle of both money in and money out. Yeah, and we don't have that mapping like the desktop QuickBooks has like a beautiful map of what, how everything kind of flows into the pieces, mm -hmm. which you don't really get on, I don't think you get on the dashboard here, so. Don't we have in our um, description of projects, didn't we kind of create uh, the projects um, with the flow, yeah. With the flow, so. Mm -hmm. Which is important. You really, before you start pushing buttons and clicking boxes, look at it to see if, you know, what you want. I mean, obviously, you can undo some of these so you can go back, but some of them you can't. So, yeah, you really want to make sure you pick the right, so you select the right things. Yeah. Now, custom transaction numbers all the way around in here. At any point in time, if you turn this on, it gives you the ability to manipulate what the invoice sequence is. So, let's say you start at 1001, right? and you go two, three, four, five, but then you decide you want to change the next one to say um, QB1005, 
it will then keep counting up from there, QB1006, 1007, 1008 mm -hmm. with the QB on there. A little trick that can be done is if you do a custom numbering sequence like that QB1005, do that, create your first purchase order, then come back in and turn this back off. It will still keep that custom numbering sequence that you want, but will make it to where you don't have to worry about people using duplicate numbers. You don't want duplicate numbers on anything. Um, so that's a little tip trick. And then default message would be whatever language you want to show up every time to where you don't actually have to recreate it every time. Um, default email messages, this same idea of for the purchase orders, um, you can have it to where automatically email yourself a copy of it as well. Um, you know, standard message, so forth, 